Okay. So I'd like to welcome you all to OFSA Swimming 2019 in, in Toronto. Thank you for coming to the coach meeting tonight and thanks to those coaches that are watching what is hopefully a live stream that's going on uh, right now to, um, to cover the same content. Um, I've put a link up on the, uh, the screen that's for you to verify that you did actually attend the coach meeting. There's two options that uh, you attended in person or that you attended via online. That same link will be up at the, again at the, end of the, um, at the end of the coach meeting. So if you don't get it right now, that's fine. But if you've already logged in and verified you're here, that, that's great. So I, I thank you for that. So I just would like to introduce the, the committee. Not everybody from the committee is here, but I'll tell you it's been a two-year process and it's been a real pleasure working with the, the uh, nine other members of the Offset Committee for Toronto. Um, the TDSSAA uh, really cooperates well together in terms of, the, uh, of our own association championship meets and uh, it's no different for OFSA. We have all the four different regions in Toronto that are represented. Uh, Jennifer Brunner from HPE, who's down in the front here, has been wonderful at coordinating things with uh, TDSB as a whole. Um, yeah, absolutely. Jenna Bell from uh, Don Mills Collegiate. Tasha Boylan from Lawrence Park, Jennifer Kill from David Mary Thompson. Jennifer, if you've got uh, a pair of swimmers that will be swimming over the weekend, she's the person, sorry, over the two days, she's the person that you'll be talking to about that. She's done an incredible job of, uh, of making arrangements and really keeping um, the pair of swimmers in mind when we're making plans for how things are going to operate on the deck, and she'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, Hans Mesker from Wexford CI. All of the timers uh, are coming from Wexford. He's unable to be here tonight. Uh, Megan Ransom from Weston. She's helping with the awards tomorrow. Uh, Nick Rowe from Etobicoke Collegiate. Not here tonight, but uh, coordinating our media. Uh, Koji Takahashi is coach with me at York Mills Collegiate and involved in the committee. And finally, Heather Trombley, who was uh, collecting the checks and so on from HPE. Um, as I said, uh, oh, she also arranged for the hotel uh, blocks to be, uh, to be set aside. So a really fantastic group of people to, to work with. So I just would like everybody here to take a moment to, to uh, give them a round of applause for that. So just before we start, I, I played with a, a few stats. We've got 2,175 swimmers that are swimming over the two days from 327 schools. 1,714 individual entries, 442 relay entries, and the last number, just because I was feeling a bit sorry for myself on Saturday night, uh, 1,559 is the number of emails I've received related to uh, OFSA um, since we started planning two years ago. I assume I answered most of them, so I guess that doubles that number. Um, and then I got a whole bunch more over the past two days, probably as many as what I had before Saturday night. Um, so I'm just uh, going to ask Jim Barbeau, who is a uh, rep from OFSA, to come forward. He's going to talk about a few things that are OFSA related in, in general and then some uh, swimming specific things. And, um, and I'll be back with some more information. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have the distinct pleasure uh, at participating in this year's swimming championships. This is the second swimming championship I will have had the pleasure to attend. Last year was my first um, as an officer sport coordinator. I was, unfortunately, um, one of my other sports is alpine skiing and, and last year it overlapped with swimming. So I only got to see one day of swimming last year. Um, it was one of the most incredible experiences I've had as a uh, former teacher coach and, and now working for OFSA. Um, it's kind of a stunning number, Rick, when I hear you say 1,559 emails, um, because as a liaison from the office, I've had very little um, of it contact with Rick, but it really speaks to the organization uh, and the, the fluidity in which their group works. Um, so on behalf of Officer Rick, uh, I know that, that the whole group deserves an award, but uh, on behalf of Officer, we'd like to present you with a commemorative plaque for your participation and your leadership. You. 
I'd like to welcome all of you to the swimming championships as well. Um, there are a few items I'm going to kind of go through quickly. I'm going to make certain assumptions that people who, uh, experienced coaches that have been here before have, are well aware of most of the things that I'm going to talk about as well. If you haven't been before, this is your first time, uh, it really is important that you read some of the documentation that, that you've signed. Um, make yourself really familiar with the playing regulations in the future because it really helps organizing committees to eliminate possible pitfalls and difficulties. So I'm just going to touch on a few things. Um, first of all, there is a protest committee in place. Uh, the members of the protest committee are Rick, myself, and Michelle Bettig, who is the uh, Sports Advisory Committee Chair for Swimming. Michelle is here somewhere. Where are you, Michelle? There she is, right here. Um, in any case where there is a protest, it's really important that you understand the process. Um, submissions have to be given to us in writing 30 minutes after, within 30 minutes after the completion of the event. Now that's generally relating to the swimming events. If for some reason there is another incident somewhere in the building, somewhere associated with the event, then that protest would be forwarded within 30 minutes of that event. So there are two distinct possibilities for protest. Um, I'm going to assume, Rick, that you have the, f the protest forms? We'll okay. Talk more about that. Okay, so he's going to talk about that. And you're going to talk about the specific details with that as well? Um, the $50? Pick them up and get okay. Help. Okay, I won't talk a lot more about it then. Um, it's important to note that any dispute or protests around tournament structure or procedures have to be made known before the end of the meeting and everybody sort of leaves from here. Uh, I've Familiarize myself with the uh, Pan Am Center spectator policy. It's pretty comprehensive. It really supports the OFSA spectator policy as well, which I'm sure you're aware of. Um, if there are any issues at all, um, I think it's going to be fairly obvious who the committee members are. Please take advantage of uh, making those folks aware, or you can talk to me directly. The uniform policy, I think everyone understands the uniform policy, specifically as it relates to no sport club insignia. Okay, so if you have any questions about that, I can certainly respond to those. Um, I believe that everyone, teacher, coach, community coach, a student athlete, principal has signed the rules of behavior form, so I don't believe there's any need really to cover that. Um, a couple of other things that I want to bring to your attention. OFSA has started in the last two years to run their own conference. And this year our conference is May 9th and 10th. It's at Durham College. It's for all teacher coaches, phys ed teachers, athletic directors. Um, the website contains a ton of information about that. This year we're really lucky to have Scott Russell from CBC um, who's coming to be a moderator and kind of a Q&A with uh, teacher coaches and, and the like in the, uh, in the conference. So if you're interested at all in that, take a look at the website. Uh, there's lots of information there. One of the other areas that I have responsibility for with OFSA is in the scholarship and awards program. Um, it's a really, really um, extensive. Uh, there's a lot of money available. And I'm just going to highlight three of the areas. First of all, Brian Maxwell Scholarship. For those of you that have been around a long time, you might be aware of Brian Maxwell, who was a TDSSAA track and field and cross country athlete. Um, went on to found the Power Bar Nutrition Company along with his wife. Um, unfortunately, Brian had a, a defective heart valve and passed away, I believe it was in 1970, no, 1994. And so there was a foundation started by his wife in which there are six. $5,000 scholarships awarded each year, three male and three female, um, through his foundation. Scholarship applications for this, these awards are due on June the 14th. The Alumni Scholarship Program, OFSA has an extensive alumni uh, group that supports uh, any number of scholarships depending on the quality and quantity of applications that we get. We rotate the applications through 
um, six regions each year. And so this year, EASA, Eastern Ontario, Lake Ontario, the region of Peel, Southern Ontario, the Toronto District separate school, or secondary schools, and the Western Ontario Secondary School Associations are eligible. It's really important um, for these two awards, as well as the next one, the Character Athlete Awards, that you take this information back. You may not be the frontline person for awards in your school, but if you can make these uh, awards known to people in the guidance area or your athletic director, it's really helpful. Um, sometimes the awards go unclaimed, and that's unfortunate because there are lots of kids that are attending post-secondary that could use the money. With respect to alumni scholarship, uh, as I said, there are $500 awards given to male and female student athletes who are going to post-secondary. That's based upon, the, again, the number of applications we receive and the dollar values that we have. Uh, those applications are due April 15th. And finally, Jostin supports uh, two scholarships in, a, in the amount of $1,000, one male, one female, and the due date for those is April the 29th, one male, one female, as I said, okay? A couple of other things just to wrap up. Future championships next year, now that Rick and his committee have this thing nailed perfectly, they're going to rehost again. In 2020-21, Swasa, uh, Windsor, will be hosting that championship. And so beginning in April at our AGM on April 10th, I believe it is, uh, bids will be received for the 2021-22 championships. So if you're at all interested and you have the capacity to host in your area, it might be something to consider. Um, the other thing I want to bring to your attention is that on the website, uh, there is a participant survey. Please take advantage of that. Uh, encourage your athletes to participate in the survey as well. It's really important for us as a staff and also for conveners down the road to have feedback as to how they can improve the experience for everybody. The last job I have is to introduce the Leadership in School Sport Award. Each year, OFSA presents a Leadership in School Sport Award at each OFSA championship to a teacher coach who has made a significant contribution to the educational athletic program at their school and in their association. The recipient of this award exemplifies the values of fair play and good sportsmanship while promoting enjoyment, personal growth, and educational achievement through school sport. It's my pleasure now to call on Megan Ransom to introduce and present this year's Leadership in School Sport Award. Good evening. Everybody hear me? I'm short. This year's Leadership in School Sport Award is presented to a teacher who has given over 45 years of service to swimming in a high school sport. He has been a fixture in Toronto high school swimming, first with the Tri-City and the York Board of Education, and since amalgamation with the TDSAA. He has coached swimming nearly every year of his career and has convened for both the Tri-City Championships and West Region of the TDSSAA. He works tirelessly to promote swimming at York Memorial CI, encouraging weaker swimmers to persevere and improve. His dedication, commitment, and mentorship have garnered numerous TDSSAA championships for his school. His contribution to student athlete, athletics does not end with swimming. He also has coached field hockey, rugby, tennis, archery, ice hockey, and cross country. Farley has made a lasting imprint on swimming and athletics in the TDSB over his more than four decade career. It is with great honor I present the Office of Leadership and School Sport Award to Farley Charles.
Okay, so now a little bit more about the running of the swimming championship. Um, so the schedule is on the uh, on the uh, the championship website. We've got warm ups from uh, seven to nine a.m. and the warm ups uh, sessions are assigned in your coach bag. It tells you what association is assigned to which session, and we ask people to please adhere to that as much as possible so that we can balance the load in in the in the pools. Keep in mind that the A and B session goes in that order this morning and then, or sorry, Tuesday morning, and then they flip-flop on Wednesday. The B session goes first and then the A session. Um, there will be a continuous warm-up uh, pool available for those that don't make the, uh, the warm-up from the 7 to 9 a.m. period. Uh, the preliminaries will run, well, we, we said 9 to 11.30. If you look at your heat sheets, it looks like we're going to be going a little bit longer than 11.30. Um, keep in mind that on those heat sheets, the times are approximations. Please don't tell uh, students that those are the exact times that they're swimming. If we can catch up a little bit, we will try to, to do that. So it's just a guideline. Um, paraswimmer classification. There's only a few paraswimmers that need to be classified, but that goes at 10.30 on both Tuesday and Wednesday morning, and uh, uh, Jen Kill will talk about that in a little bit. And then finally, the, the finals in the afternoon, going from... Um, hopefully 1 o'clock to 3.30, um, and uh, yeah, the para events are uh, direct to finals in the afternoon. Um, so this is the layout of the facility itself. There's three parking entrances, so it can be a little confusing when you're, when you're coming in. Um, there's a bus loop to the east side and a north and south parking entrance. When you come into the facility, though, the, there's a welcome desk there for those that haven't registered, although presumably everybody that is here uh, tonight has already registered. The swimmers will go in where the green uh, arrow is there. That's where the athlete gates are, and those passes that uh, are in your bags are what allows them to access the turnstiles, which goes downstairs into the change rooms and uh, out to the pool deck. The office of merchandise will be sold right beside uh, that entryway. Um, oh, and the, the spectator galleries. The, the west side we want um, just for athletes and teams, so you can sit down on, there's not much room on the pool deck level in terms of bleachers, but we have the, the bleacher, the, the spectator stands on both sides. On the west side, we'd prefer to keep it for athletes and teams, um, and then on the east side, athletes can be there as well, but uh, parents, spectators, and, and other people that are coming to watch uh, are welcome to view in that area. The, uh, we're going to talk more about the, how marshalling is going to go on in a second when Dave uh, Denye comes up. But just to give you an idea of the layout, we've got the main competition pool, the continuous warm-up and cool-down pool. The change room access is down at the south end. Um, and this meat management table we're going to talk about a little bit more. But that's where if you've got questions or scratches or relay changes, that's where all that is going on. Um, we'll also talk a bit more about this para section uh, a little later in the presentation. And so I just would like to uh, invite our uh, meet referee, um, Dave Denier, to come up and speak a little bit more about his expect expectations related to the officiating. Yeah, okay. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I'll talk, talk to uh, marshalling first. Uh, as Rick said, pool deck is not a lot of space. There's not enough room for athletes and coaches to be there. There is enough room for all the coaches to be on the pool deck. Oh, okay. okay. There's not a lot of room on the pool deck, but there is enough room for all the uh, coaches and possibly when you talk to the athlete after their swim and then send them back upstairs. When we marshal, if you look, there's a hallway. When they come down the stairs through the gates, there's a long hallway. They, mar they go down the long hallway to the end and come in through the dive tank. The clerk's table will be there, and then they can come in. Don't go through the pool. There's not enough room to, it'll get crowded, and kids will start missing their heats, okay? If you have any questions, um, tomorrow morning, I'll be around. You can ask questions, but try and keep the kids upstairs, please, okay? Um, Warm-up rules, no diving, unless it's in sprint lanes on the outside, no diving in the continuous warm-up, warm-down pool at all, all right? Um, no unsafe entries, no cannonballs, huge stride jumps, that kind of stuff. There are consequences if they get caught doing it. 
and the consequence is they get scratched out of their first event. If it's a relay and you don't have any alternates, your relay's in trouble, okay? There's no new rules to worry about. Um, Swim Ontario in their infinite wisdom decided pool in, uh, in water starts is permissible. I doubt we'll see that here somehow. Um, suits, usual stuff. Fabric, um, above the knee for male and female, below the navel for male, so shoulders, uh, neck are uncovered for female, okay? Uh, no taping, any kind of support tape is not permitted. I did have a question about uh, an athlete with a broken finger and splint, a, a split on the finger is acceptable. Do not tape the two fingers together, okay? Um, my officials, I got a full deck. They all know what they're doing. And if you have any issues, stick to the person blowing the whistle. Okay, don't chase me down or whatnot. Whoever's blowing the whistle is in charge of the session. They'll answer your questions. And if you have a question about a disqualification, because they will be announced, we are not going to come looking for you. So pay attention. We'll, we'll let you know what we're doing, and then we'll announce the disqualification, event, heat, lane, and whether it's a turn, start, or stroke infraction. If you want more details, talk to the referee, okay? Uh, protests, um, protests have to be presented to the referee, the person blowing the whistle. The first stage is you speak to them, ask for clarification, and if you have an issue with them, say so, and then write it up, present it to the referee. If he accepts it, you'll sign it, date it, and pass it along up the chain. If he does not, then he'll sign it back to you, tell you why. And at that point, if you don't agree with it at that point, you take it to Rick, I believe, the convener, who will deal with it then. Okay, everybody clear? Okay, we got all three tanks uh, in the morning. The dive tank and the two, one, the two main tanks. But we only have the dive tank from seven to nine. Okay, after that we're not allowed in the diving area except for the section that we're marshalling. Um, finals, positive check-in. You must check in through the clerk for finals. If you do not, the alternate will be inserted and you miss your swim. Okay, miss swims are considered late scratches and in the, during the prelims and the finals, late, uh, you know, miss swims are late scratches. Um, in finals, they, they, and they won't, won't be accommodated to be reinserted somewhere else unless it's an official's error. Okay, everybody clear? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you that is at marshalling. You show up at marshalling and you say, I am here. Okay, and we will finalize the finals heat to events before it swims. So if they're not there by then, then they, they miss their swim. Okay, results will be posted. I believe we're gonna post them up in the hallway upstairs. Okay. Yeah, and we're all, I think we're also posting them down at this end. Yeah, on the, on, the, on the wall at the um, south end of the pool and on the wall upstairs uh, where the athletes are, are gathering with their stuff. Okay, anybody got any questions, concerns, issues? No? Oh. Okay then. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you, Dave. Um, yeah, and just, just hold your applause for one second. Just, um, Dave and I had a, a conversation recently. He's been now coordinating the officials for, I believe he said 17 years. 16, sorry. Um, and, but he tells me that this is his last year uh, working at coordinating the officials. And I just wanted the coaches that are gathered here tonight just to recognize that long-term commitment that he's made to swimming at Oxford. Just as, as a personal note, one of my earliest memories of OFSA was having one of my disqualifier, or one of my swimmers disqualified and ejected from 
the off some meat for mistreating an official, and this was the official that was mistreated. And uh, Dave was quite right in ejecting that swimmer, so I never questioned it. So, But thank you for all that time that you've given us, Dave. Um. <laughs> They're already lining up. Um, just uh, uh, one more mention about how, uh, how things are working in terms of marshalling. It's really about trying to direct traffic uh, on the pool, and I ask that you ask your swimmers to cooperate with us. We're trying to get a bit of a flow going. There's no access in front of this electronics booth here, so swimmers that are going to marshalling do have to go out the back and around back the hallway. And when they're finished their swimming, we want them to exit towards the awards podium side and out that way. And it'll, it'll make things run much smoother in terms of uh, being able to, to run the meet efficiently. So we ask for you and your swimmers' cooperation in that. Um, so the meat management table, as I said, it's down at the, uh, the south end of the electronics uh, booth there. And that's an important table for you for a whole number of, of reasons. Um, this is where you will submit uh, scratches for finals, um, any changes to relay names that you, or that you really order that you're doing on the day. Um, protest forms and, and we will help you understand the nature of the protest forms and how to complete them should, uh, should you have something that you're concerned about. Um, if there are pair classifications that are being done in that 10.30 time in the morning, they will be submitted there. Basically any problems, questions related competition, all going to um, that table. Hans Mesker uh, is uh, largely going to be the one that's at that table, but we have a couple of people helping him, him there. So um, that's where you go for, for any of those uh, items. So, uh, that one? Okay, sorry. Um, I, don't, I can't honestly promise that I'll have the maps on t tonight. There's a lot of other things that I've got to get done tonight. Um, but I will say that, that uh, the live stream that is going, you'll be able to go in and you can freeze it and take a screenshot. Uh, that might be the best. I considered putting it in the coaches' packages, but it becomes a, a situation of information overload sometimes, too. There was too much information uh, going in there. Uh, question, yeah. Um, yeah, so their coaches' tables will be lining both sides of the of the the competition. Well, not sorry, this side of the competition pool. That side is largely blocked because of, of the meat uh, management table and so on. But both sides of the continuous warm up uh, uh, cool down pool will have coaches' tables set up there. Yeah. Okay. Um, scratches for finals, just like in previous years, uh, thirty minutes. After the completion, or sorry, after the event results have been posted uh, from the prelims, we're asking you to declare your scratch for the uh, afternoon session. It's really, really difficult to get uh, the morning session turned around to the afternoon session um, in such a short period of time. So your cooperation in adhering to that uh, deadline would be really appreciated. Um, so that's if you've got a swimmer that you know is not going to swim in the A or B final, so that we can put somebody else in. Um, Remember in relays, only people that are listed as an alternate on the relay team as of the registration can swim um, in place of one of the other swimmers. Um, you need to make that arrangement through the, uh, through the meet management table. You must swim the relay in the order that it is on the heat sheets. Uh, if you want to change that order, once again, you have to fill out a card at meet management table to, uh, to address that. Um, and remember that teams are DQ'd for swimming out of order. Personal disclosure, I had a team last year that swam out of order and they were caught and DQ'd, so it does happen. Uh, we already talked about the, the fact about disqualifications that if there's a, a question about it, it should be the coach coming to talk to the referee uh, about it, not the, the swimmer. If you're going to uh, file a protest and appeal a disqualification. $50 cash is required in addition to the form. Once again, the meet management table will help you out um, should, you, uh, uh, should you wish to proceed in that direction. Um, Jim already mentioned the jury of appeal. He mentioned three names. We actually have uh, six names that we've got set aside just in case 
uh, the jury of appeal has, uh, for example, we've asked Kevin Wong to be part of that in case it's something related to para swimming. Um, we've also got some extra people involved in case it happens to involve their own team or association. Um, so myself, Jim Barbeau, uh, Michelle Bedig, we also have Jennifer Brunner, Dave Denier, and Kevin Wong, and three of those people will, will form uh, a committee uh, related to any protests that are filed. And I'm going to turn it over now to Jennifer, who is going to talk just a little bit about uh, the process for the para swimmers. We've got a lot of para swimmers, uh, quite a few more than we had last year uh, in Windsor. And I will uh, say that a lot of that has been due to Jennifer's work in the TDSB and encouraging coaches to get uh, para swimmers involved. I'm also going to invite Kevin Wong up because Kevin is going to be helping out with the classification. So to start off, anyone who is classified between S1 to S13, if you haven't already got your classification numbers, you do need to see myself and Kevin Wong at 10.30 for a classification swim, right? So I'm gonna let Kevin take care of that. Uh, if you saw the big arrow earlier, kind of leading to where the change rooms are, uh, I will be there. And if not, we'll be at the meet management table. So between those two spots, we'll kind of gather. We've got about two people that we know already, but there should be a handful more that we are trying to track down. Um, in terms of your submission of classification, we are still missing a couple classification from coaches. So please make sure that uh, you've either seen myself or Kevin because we are looking for you and we will have a list of people afterwards. Um, in terms of the warm-up, warm-up is available all day in the, in the uh, warm-up pool. It is lane zero for all of our para-athletes. So that means that no other athletes other than para-athletes are allowed in lane zero. Okay, there's eight other lanes, nine other lanes, the other swimmers can swim in that, those lanes. Um, for marshalling, um, the para-athletes are gonna be sitting and marshalling in a different area. So down here, in, in the morning, that area is available for all swimmers and coaches. In the afternoon, you will be asked to leave that area as that area will be marshaled for the para-athletes only. We do need the seating there for our athletes to be sitting. So if you are sitting there, you will be asked to move. So please be aware that if you're, not, if you're sitting there and you don't have a para-athlete, you will be literally asked to move. Um, so para-athletes are gonna be marshalling in that area. So we're gonna go in reverse. So instead of coming down, we're gonna go up that way. So para-athletes will have a slightly different marshalling, but it, it really doesn't change much in terms of the check-in. In terms of competition, it is straight to finals. So we will make a call for all para-athletes to come down so that they can marshal. We are gonna be putting you in your heats and in your lanes and moving you across as we are competing. Um, there, because we have the benches there, we will be sitting you in the, ben in the benches as well. So just be aware that you won't be standing, you'll be sitting, so it'll be a, a little better for the athletes. And in terms of scoring, the awards will not happen right away. We do need to have a little bit of time to score for some of the athletes. So we will, add, we will page you back down to pick up your awards. And if you have any questions, please, again, see myself or Kevin Wong. Any, anyone? Please. Um, so if unlike other able-bodied swimmers, they're, uh, whoever finishes the race first does not mean they actually win. What happens is the reason why those classification codes are important, uh, we look at their gender, we look at the classification code, and we enter the time, and we convert to a set series of points. And therefore, whoever's got the highest number of points at the end of the race is who gets first, second, and third based on uh, the gender. So the, although with the racing male and female, it will be split apart afterwards. So that's what we need to manually convert all the times to points. Sorry, is age applicable? No, it's only based on their classification. Any other questions? Awesome. Oh, sorry. Uh, what it'll say is um, if you look at the heat sheets, um, if there's no number next to the athlete's name, please come see us. We've managed to update quite a few of them. Number two, if you look at the heat sheets or finals, it'll say their last name, and where it used to be their first name, it'll say need code. So very clearly, there's about four names we still need to hunt down, and then we'll delete those names and replace it afterwards. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. 
No. You'll see something that says S, probably S14 is the most common. Uh, for anybody with intellectual disabilities, you might see something like S10 for a physical disability, but say S with a, with a number after it. Anywhere from 1 through 14. So the W17 represents that they're female and 17 years of age. Uh, oh, right back there. If you look at the cover of the heat sheets, um, the event orders are, are listed there. So where it says like 101, it's right after whatever the event is that, that's listed prior to that in the heat sheet. I can't tell you exactly when because it really depends on when the morning session finishes and when we're able to start the afternoon session. Any other pair of questions? Oh, at the back. Parking. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of parking there. Um, there's two hours free parking um, at the TPASC facility, and then I think the all-day rate is something like eight dollars and fifty cents. Um, you get a ticket when you go in the, the gate, um, and then it's like you know being at the airport where before you leave in the facility, there's a machine that you put the ticket in, make your payment, and it spits the ticket out for you to, uh, uh, to stick in the gate to get out of the facility. Okay, and uh, once again, thanks to, to Kevin Wong especially, he's not part of the TDSSAA, but has graciously agreed to help us out with the, the uh, para process and bring his expertise uh, in that area. So thank you, Kevin. Okay, so just quickly going through some other items, awards. Um, so, so the A finals in, uh, will um, run first and then the B finals in the afternoon. From the A finals, uh, Placing uh, one through eight will appear there and they will get their awards immediately at the end of their race So they will be taken um, uh, From the finish area over to the awards po podium and sort of corralled there and then when we're able to to um, uh, To announce those awards and, and give them to them as races are are going on We will do so as quickly as we can after the end of the race the idea is uh, to get the ribbons and the medals to the the students while they are there um, we're not going to be mailing out awards, so make sure that if your students don't pick them up, that you as a coach come down to the awards area um, and pick them up before you leave. Um, just some comments about the heat sheets. We've given you copies of heat sheets for the preliminaries for both day one um, and day two in your coach bags. We had a lot of discuss. oh, sorry, and they're also, we will have limited copies on sale for $3 at the facility. They're also are available currently online. Uh, on the championship website, and you can use Meet Mobile, um, which is a subscription service if you want to follow the results uh, along that way. For finals, the committee had quite a long debate about what we wanted to do with finals, and what it amounted to is that um, in interest of, of saving the environment as much as possible, and given the short turnaround time and how difficult it is to get heat sheets prepared in time for the officials, never mind the coaches as well, we made the decision that we are not going to be giving uh, finals heat sheets to all of the coaches. You can uh, down, once again, we're gonna put them online immediately so you can download them from the championship website. We will try to get some limited uh, amounts available for sale in, in the lobby, but our priority is to get the event going again um, and have them available for the officials. So bring a tablet, bring a cell phone. We will also post them in the facility. They'll be down at Marshalling, but we'll also post them on walls in the upper spectator area as well as in the swimmer uh, area. Um, uh, photos. We had our photo we had a photographer arrange for team photos. Unfortunately, they backed out at the last minute. Um, we've got a really nice place to do the photos. In, in my opinion, uh, um, there's an upper platform area at the southeast end of the spectator uh, gallery that has the pool as a beautiful backdrop. Um, so what we're going to have is we're, we're going to have a sign up 
a list available in the, in the lobby area where our registration tent is. If you want to sign up a, a time for your team to go up there and do a team photo with the uh, Office of Banner, we'll have a couple of volunteers up there with the Office of Banner. Um, I believe we're aiming for uh, the time period of 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock on both days. Um, and we're going to set sort of five minute blocks to, for people to go up and, and do that. So we invite you to do that, but we do not have any, uh, any uh, photographer that is paid to uh, send out packages uh, as in the past. And we'll see how that goes. Um, behavior, just some notes from the facility. We had our, our city championship there two weeks ago. It was a dry run through and it's a beautiful facility. I'm sure all of your swimmers will enjoy themselves. There's one of the things that I really noticed, a lot of room. It's a far cry from the days when we did offset at the Etobicoke Olympium and I can remember being squished up in the upper areas with no backs on the benches. These, it's a nice facility, lots of room. Um, but they do have some rules that, that we want to make sure that uh, your swimmers are following. Uh, as, as all other facilities, footwear once you're outside of the, the pool area. So if you're in the hallways, um, you need to be, their swimmers need to be wearing something on their feet. Um, but also, a uh, little different than many of the facilities we've been at, uh, TPASC asked because they're such a public facility in terms of other things that are going on there. On the main floor, if your swimmers are coming up out of the change room areas, they need to have shirts and uh, bottoms on, whether it's shorts or sweatpants or, or what have you. Um, they've said it's fine down around the change room area when swimmers are going to marshalling. Uh, they can feel free to be down there uh, race ready. Um, so they can be just in bathing suits there, of course, with uh, footwear on because they're in the, in the hallways. Um, they've also asked me to mention a couple of other things. One, the no climbing, for, I mean, it seems sort of obvious, but uh, no climbing from the upper balconies down to the, to the lower bleachers. It's a relatively easy climb to do, um, but also quite dangerous, and uh, TPASC will not, um, uh, not look kindly on swimmers that are, are doing that and may remove them from the event. So just ask your swimmers to, there's no direct access from the upper galleries to the pool deck. You do have to go back into, through the lobby and, th and through the gates and down the stairs to the change rooms. Um, so we ask that uh, swimmers uh, and coaches respect that. Um, they've also asked us, uh, they were unsure at the time um, when I was talking to them last week about whether they will have divers in the diving tank. So there's a national team that practices out of there and they may be using the facility while we're, um, while we're uh, running our competition. Um, and even though it might be tempting, they're quite clear they do not want photos or videos of the divers taken. Um, by spectators, and if they see swimmers doing that, or, or, or coaches, or whoever, they will uh, go up to the person and ask them to delete the photo on site in front of them. They're worried about the privacy, especially of the younger uh, divers that are part of that national uh, program, and I think uh, as teachers we can understand and respect uh, uh, that concern. Um, as far as food goes, quite clear also, there's no team distribution of food on site, and I thought they were quite good at explaining that to us. They said, so you as a coach cannot bring in a cooler or a case of water and give it out to your swimmers uh, at the facility. However, if on the bus you've got water and the, you're saying, okay, everybody take a bottle or two bottles with you, swimmers can bring those individually. You just can't distribute it. Um, as a coach to the team in the facility. And it has to do with their licensing rights related to their food uh, services that they've got on, on site. Um, so we do have to respect that. Um, th I did post information on the website about how you could do team ordering of food. It's a little late for that now. However, there is also um, the app and the information about this is in your coach packages that uh, individual swimmers and coaches can order food ahead of time so you don't have to get in the big uh, lines for uh, Booster Juice and Tim Hortons and the, the other places. We tried it out at uh, the swimming championship and it was really, I found it quite convenient to, um, to use. So encourage your swimmers to do that if they're going to be purchasing uh, items there. And then the last thing about uh, food and drink, um, once again, no glass on, on the deck. Um, n no beverages other than water, however, the, the uh, people at TPAS said they understand coaches may want to bring in coffee and so on with them. They're not going to check people's uh, mugs, but bring it in a stainless steel thermos on deck, no glass, no takeout cups. If you come in with your Tim Hortons cup in hand, they're going to uh, ask you to, to uh, step out of the pool area until you're finished it. Um, so they also told me that Tim Hortons sells such 
mugs at the facility, so <laughs> bring your own. Um, Dave already talked about no diving in the warm-up pool while competition's going on. We're going to announce marshalling in the morning, um, but not in the afternoon. The, the expectation is swimmers do get to their marshalling on time. They should be thinking at least three or four events ahead of time being down there. And keeping in mind that there's no direct access from the, the, the bleachers to um, the pool deck area, it will take some time to go around and through the, the gates and down through the change rooms and the hallways. So make sure your swimmers are leaving themselves plenty of time for that. Uh, I already talked about the start times being approximate on the heat sheets. We also have, we have quite a few uh, volunteers helping us, over 90 volunteers, uh, student volunteers that are helping us. Um, in particular, there's about uh, 10 or 11 volunteers that are wearing bright yellow event staff uh, shirts that are going to be directing traffic, asking people not to be uh, hanging around in areas where they shouldn't be hanging around, blocking hallways and that kind of thing. And we just ask you to remind your um, athletes to respect all the student volunteers that are helping uh, out. Um, Coach entry to the pool, warm-up starts at 7. Uh, coaches can get access to the pool at 6.30, so you can get in a little earlier. Your swimmers will be allowed access at 6.45. We are streaming um, uh, through RecTech. Uh, they actually have the link active now. I, I saw it. It looks really nice, ready to go. Um, and uh, they streamed last year in Windsor, and I thought it was just a beautiful job. It really it was a professional look to it. I know that my own school is watching some of our races. They had it playing on TVs in the cafeteria. So I encourage you to contact your schools and uh, let them know about this, and, and uh, parents as well. Um, Meet Mobile, I, I've already said, is a paid uh, uh, a subscription app that you can use. You can download it through the um, Apple Store or the, the Google Play uh, Store. Um, and uh, results will also be available on the championship website at the end of the day. Um, it may not, yeah, it, it may not be, oh. There you go. Yeah, in fact, when you go on to the Meet Mobile, it says, like, uh, Meet's nearby you. It should be the first one there. Uh, yeah. Uh, apparel and merch, as usual, available on site. Um, hopefully, athletes have had the chance to do some pre-order. That really helps uh, um, them have the stuff that they want there on site. But I also know if they, if they run out of material on site, uh, uh, Ad, Lauren and Adware are really good about arranging orders and shipping them to schools um, after the fact. So it, it, there sh nobody should be missing out on uh, merchandise if they are wanting that. Um, we were going to do the Leadership in Sport Award uh, now, but uh, we already took care of that. Um, just a couple of items left. We've had some really good support from a variety of sponsors. Scarborough U of T provided uh, two sponsors for us, their admissions department as well as their athletics and recreation. Um, Lululemon provided the coach bags that, uh, or that uh, were available at registration. Uh, Olympian Swimming and Marchant School Sports uh, have, have uh, also supported the, the event. So um, we encourage you to take the time to support them, seeing as they supported us, if you uh, find a way in the future. Um, a whole bunch of thank yous. Um, Danielle, who uh, has convened the last three years in Windsor, has been so great at answering the many questions that I've either emailed or phoned her uh, uh, about and I appreciate that. Uh, Kevin Wong and his support through uh, the para swimmers, Dave Denier arranging all the officials for us, Ben coordinating the entries uh, from us down in, in Windsor and continuing the wonderful job that he's done the past three years uh, at Windsor. Uh, Michelle Bedeg who has been dealing with the open classification uh, appeals and the para swimming um, uh, as the SAC chair has been a, a wonderful uh, assistance to us as well. And the OFSA office, not just uh, Jim, but Pat Park and others at the OFSA office who provide the support necessary to us to run our meet. And Jim's already talked about the future. Next year we're back at TPASC, Windsor in 2021, and 2022 is open for bids so for those that are interested. And Jennifer looks like she's coming out to to do something. I'll just uh, take one more moment to thank you all for being here from the TDSB and the TDSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
And on behalf of the OFSA swim committee, I'd like to thank Rick Mahoney for his tireless work and his uh, excellent uh, job being the lead on this project. So thank you. Good luck to all your swimmers tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Go get some good night's sleep, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Let's have some fun.